Are you a little indecisive as to what you want to do in the galaxy or what you want to fly? We have the solution to that right here. Do you want to trade with your fellow humans and earn some credits? You need a python. Do you want to eradicate the pirate scum from a system? You need a python. And do you want to become the pirate and liberate the cargo at no cost? You need a python. Do you want to retire and make your money from mining or ferrying people from Rubigo to Sirius? You need a python. And finally, do you want to fly into a Thargoid maelstrom on a whim knowing you won't make it out alive? You need a Sidewinder. Seriously, it's a buttload cheaper to rebuy than a Python unless you like literally throwing money at the Thargoid problem with no return. Ladies and gentlemen, here we have, in case you hadn't already guessed, the Python. Currently manufactured by Falcon de Lacy, although not designed by them. That credit goes to Watton Pritney Ship Constructions, who designed the Python some 600 years ago, back in the 2700. However, after Watton Pritney went through a number of mergers and takeovers, this ship ended up with Falcon de Lacy along with the modular ship design, which they've since permitted other companies to use. Despite the age of design, with the advances in technology, this ship has seen many revisions over the years. Originally, it needed a crew of about 20 people to run, this later dropped to 7 and now you can get away with a single pilot plus a co-pilot when the mood suits for some company. The Python is a medium ship with a length of just under 88 meters and a width of 58.1. And despite this being the original template for the modular ship design that's in use today, it's made really good use out of that system. Out of all of the ships that can land on a medium sized pad, the Python can carry more cargo than just about anything else, which is one of the many many good things about this ship. Let's talk about its looks. The Python looks like a generic mid-size ship on the outside. That's not to say there's anything wrong with its aesthetics, there's just nothing special about its looks either. For a 600 year design though, that's not a bad thing. It doesn't look like an antiquated relic of the past, in fact it looks more current than some of the other ships that are out there, looking at the Type 6 here in particular. There's a fair selection of different colour schemes out there if you're into customization. I've got this one on my Combat and Piracy Python, mostly because I'm a bit partial to some yellow on my ships, but my mining one uses DeLacy's default palette. It's there to mine and shift cargo, it's not meant to win beauty contests. Inside there's a fairly spacious cockpit with enough room to bring a friend if you'd like. I'm not a fan of the side-by-side -side seating arrangement, I'd rather have a central seat and have any crew take a seat to the side or behind. But either way, you get used to it eventually. There's a lot of room in here and it highlights just how spacious a medium ship can be, especially when compared to smaller ships like an Eagle or Sidewinder. Regardless of how this ship looks on the outside, its real party trick is how it can turn its hand to virtually any task in the galaxy. If you feel like relaxing for a few hours and mining some rocks, the Python has more than enough hard points to equip it with all of the tools that you'll need. And whilst you're filling it with cargo bays for those rocks, you'll also have enough space to bring out your inner trucker and shift bio waste between ports because moving barreled turd can really help your reputation in some parts of the galaxy while lining your pockets with a modest number of credits. If you then swap your cargo bays out for accommodation and make some tweaks to your frameshift drive, you've also got a decent enough vessel for letting needy tourists give you a handful of credits for letting them observe some cosmic tourist trap that they'll later go and slag off on the galactic version of TripAdvisor. Well it's simply unacceptable, the pilot wouldn't let me disembark and they refuse to pick up some landmines for me en route. One star will not fly with again. The jump range out of the shipyard isn't fantastic, but with engineering and a Guardian frameshift booster, you can get a respectable range out of the Python. It's Nothing that's on par with the Crate Phantom or DBX, but nonetheless, if you've got the urge to go and explore unknown systems and make your mark on them, the Python will work just fine. It's got more than enough internal slots and utility mounts to equip all of the exploration equipment that you'll need, and besides, 
even if you can get a longer jump range out of other ships, it just means those ships will jump past some of the really interesting systems that are out there. Finally, we come across what the Python was potentially designed for, combat. This thing is no joke, it sports three large hardpoints and two medium, all with decent convergence. You can equip this ship with more than enough firepower to take anything out including Federal Corvettes and Anacondas. The underslung large hardpoint has a 180 degree field of fire when gimbaled or turreted, which can also really help when up against more nimble ships. For a medium ship, it's got a staggering ability to mass lock other ships, making it ideal for you to take the earnings of a trader in a Type 9 away from them while they struggle to escape. You can also make the Python into a hull tank, so if you do bite off more than you can chew, you've got plenty of armour to soak up the damage while you make your escape. It's not perfect though. The power plants on offer can struggle to feed the weapons without a modest amount of engineering, and even with Grade 5 dirty drag drives, you may struggle with more nimble ships, but to combat this, I've taken to throwing a large turreted frag cannon underneath to make use of that wide firing arc. An ideal solution to this would be a ship launch fighter, but since this ship was designed long before fighters were around, it looks like Fulton de Lacy either couldn't add that function or merely couldn't be bothered to retrofit it because it encourages people to buy the crate Mark II. I'm told from a wingmate that the Python can be rigged to handle anti-Xeno combat well, and having flown alongside his one during the battle for HIP 23716, I can confirm it can be made more than capable of taking out Fargoid interceptors, although personal preference for me is either the Alliance Chieftain or the Viper Mark IV. So as per tradition, the question you need to ask is, should you buy a Python? The answer in most cases, and at least in my opinion, is an unequivocal yes. With many multi-purpose things in life, the phrase jack of all trades, master of none can get thrown around, but in the case of the Python, I just don't care. It's a ship that can land practically anywhere, unless you're in a backwater swamp with only a small pad, so for trading at outposts, there's nothing really that can beat it, and they've got to get their supplies from somewhere. For exploration, it may not have the longest jump range, but it means you get to see more along the way, and for combat, you can rig this to handle pretty much anything with the right setup. It's not the cheapest ship, it weighs in at just under 57 million to buy and the stock insurance is about 3 million, but it's a ship that will keep earning you money and paying its way. After a short period of time with the Python, it won't owe you anything. So what are you waiting for? Go out there, get yourself a Python, and do whatever you want to do with it. As always, thank you for watching. If you like this video, hit the button. And if you want to see more, I've already done reviews of the Eagle and the Viper 3 and there are more to come. So if you hit subscribe, you'll get to see those as they drop. All that aside, don't fly without a rebuy. And I hope that you're having a good time. 07 Commanders.